Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining me this week. We got a great video. I think there's gonna to be tons of information for you guys, especially if you're looking to set up, or maybe you already have set up a quarantine tank. And this week, what I plan to talk about, I've briefly already spoken on a few videos about my quarantine tank, why I'm doing it, and why I'd probably suggest, if you have the place to do it, to do it as well. I know a lot of you probably can't do it. And maybe watching my video I released last Friday will be a good video for you to watch. So if you don't have a quarantine tank, at least you know what to look for to pit you better off when you're shopping for fish. I think we all know by now and you've heard that everyone will generally tell you if you have a reef tank, you should have a quarantine tank. No ands or ifs about it. So with my bigger tank, the Waterbox 180.5, I figured, you know what, what better time to set up a quarantine now that I have a home, I have a garage, I can certainly keep this tank running all year long. So aside from cycling the reef tank, getting the equipment, heater, and everything, I don't want to cover that. The only thing I want to be covering today is what is going to be my regimen, my medication, and what medication I'm going to be doing for this tank. Now, I've done a lot of research. I've read tons about this topic in regards to Humblefish and his write-ups he's done on plenty of forums. First and foremost, I want to give a huge shout out to Humblefish himself, the research he's, he's done, what he's brought to our hobby. All that does not come overnight. It's tons of work that he's put in and I'd love to thank him very much. I think all of us here in, our, in the reefing community can learn so much or maybe have learned so much from Humblefish himself. So thank you very much, brother. I've also done research on other forums from other people, watched tons of videos, but I think I've finally figured out what I'm gonna be doing for this reef tank. So let's assume I'm out. Just imagine there's a fish in there. If you want, what we'll do to, for you guys that are more visual, we're gonna use this syringe as a, as a fish, just pretend it's a fish. So I've already acclimated the fish. I've floated the bag. I've made sure the temperature is acclimated. And generally speaking, you can drip acclimate it and you probably do want to drip acclimate it, especially if the salinity is different. Generally in quarantine displays, you'll watch them be run at lower salinities. One, it helps with the parasites as far as getting them to go through their life cycle a bit quicker. Uh, number two, it also saves you money on salt. So on my specific tank, I'm running my salinity at 1.020 to 1.019. Uh, so it's, it's slightly lower. And generally speaking, you're gonna notice that LFS shops that have their fish, they're gonna be running them at a very close salinity. So right off the bat, if you know you're gonna be buying fish from a place that you tend to go to a lot, I would go there first and match your tank salinity to be identical to theirs. So anytime you get a fish, all you need to do is pretty much temperature acclimate the fish by floating the bag. Once we have done that, the fish will be dropped into the quarantine. Here, we'll use this to pretend it's the fish. Okay, and splashing water everywhere. Th there's a fish. Before the fish even entered the water, I'm already gonna be running my copper using copper power at one PPM. Over about six days time, I'm gonna increase that to the full strength at 2.5 PPM. And just like it goes with elements, you never dose anything into your reef tank or your quarantine without you having the proper test kit to measure for that. In my scenario, I am gonna be dosing the copper, so i am be using the HANA Copper High Range Test Kit. So this is gonna allow me to proper or properly monitor my copper, know exactly where it's at, so I either don't over or underdose it, as both of those can be bad. If you underdose it, you won't have the copper at full strength. Thus, you decrease the odds of getting rid of those parasites that we're trying to eradicate. And then too high, of course, at that point, the fish can overstress, which will lead to you killing the fish, which is gonna be no good for anyone at the end of the day. So that's gonna be it for the copper power. And you, for you guys wondering why I'm not using uh, copper power versus, I forget the, the name of the one Seachem has, and there's, I think, another brand. Uh, Humble Fish, and as well as other threads I read, highly recommend copper power. It's a lot safer on tangs, uh, antheus, and a little bit more delicate fish. They've just found they have better luck. That's not to say if you use a Seachem one, um, you know, maybe your local shop has that one. That's not to say if you do go with that one, your fish are gonna die. I know a few people that have used and are still using the Seachem version and have had no issues whatsoever. But for me personally, I really like that the copper power can run in a higher range. 
Thus, in my opinion, it's a little bit easier to keep it within the certain ranges versus the Seachem one. I noticed uh, the strength of it, you have to run it at a much lower PPM. So you can decide to do either or. Uh, again, personally, we're gonna be doing the copper power. The second thing that is gonna be done once we do arrive to full strength copper, which is 2.5 PPM if you're using copper power, we're gonna maintain that full strength for a total of 30 days. If you're in a rush and you wanna get it done a little bit sooner, you can push it to 14 days. Uh, but generally speaking, I mean, I'm looking to set up my dream tank here. I'm in no big rush. I mean, we waited long enough. So running it for an extra 15 days is no big deal. So I'm personally gonna run it for 30 days. If you're absolutely in a rush, you can do it for 14 days, uh, but that's what I'm gonna be doing my 30 day regimen. Once we do which reach full strength on the copper at 2.5, I am also gonna be dosing the API General Cure. When it comes to API General Cure, you're, you would see either some people substituting that with Prozzi Pro, but the main reason in my research in Humblefish and a lot of other people recommend General Cure is because General Cure actually has two medications in one. So General Cure has Proziquantil as well as Metronidazole. Yeah, I'm probably butchering it, but it has actually both of them in the same medication. Generally speaking, Prozi is very good at treating gill flukes and some internal parasites, where Metro is good at eradicating all internal parasites, even the one that Prozzi doesn't treat. So having these two active ingredients, you get to see why General Cure is, a, is better, in my opinion, as well as other people's opinion than Prozzi Pro. It'll kind of attack two things with the same uh, medication. So with API General Cure, that one's very straightforward. I'm gonna be using it as per the directions. The only thing I'm gonna differ from the directions, I think they recommend a water change 40 days uh, sorry, 48 hours after, so two days after. I'll probably wait a total of four days before I do do that water change. Now, it's very important that when you do do a water change, you're medicating a quarantine, you have to make sure that the water you're replacing before it even enters this reef tank is at the same copper level, in my scenario, 2.5 ppm, as well in the, the water you're gonna be changing. So it's gonna be very important, especially here more than ever, that we test the water that's mixed and that has a copper level of 2.5 ppm as well. Because if that copper level for any reason drops, you're gonna have to restart the clock for the copper treatment and the 30 days would start after that. So it's again, very, very crucial that you any water you replace in the medicated reef tank during the time it's being medicated, that the water entering is also at the very same copper level in my scenario 2.5 that's where you kind of see hand checker come very much in handy so when it comes for the general cure we're going to use it as directed for the amount of time that they're typically recommending and that should allow you to take care of some of the internal and external parasites while at the same time the copper is taking care of the velvet, the ick, and all the other bad stuff that we don't want in the reef tank. Now it's very important we understand, and I myself also understand, that these two medications are not gonna eradicate every single thing in the reef tank. I'm totally and completely understand that. There is other parasites out there that are, not, are probably not gonna be eradicated by this, but generally speaking, these Two medications are gonna eradicate the most common ones in the reef tank. And generally speaking, from my research, these two are gonna put you about 98, 99% way ahead of everyone else that's probably not quarantining. As far as that's concerned, once, once we do reach probably the uh, 30 day mark, I will run some carbon. I'll do a probably a 50% water change to get as much as the copper out of it. I will leave some copper in here. I, again, I always want to keep at least one ppm of copper in here, even when I'm not doing the actual treatment itself. Another important thing I do want to mention is you'll also research that general cure can be fed to the fish if there's any internal parasites or you want to deworm the fish. And generally speaking, I actually messaged Humble Reef directly. I said, hey, Humble Fish, I'm gonna be doing the copper power as well as the general cure for the 30 day span. The general cure is gonna be dosed in the water column. Do you recommend me to run the general cure, mix it with food and be medicating the fish with general cure? Because obviously it's already gonna be medicated in the water column, but should I also be medicating internally with food? And his response was, 
look Antonio, if the fish is not showing any poop that's stringy uh, and nothing like that, I wouldn't worry about it. If you notice the fish has stringy poop, you can absolutely dose it while you're doing the other two medications, well, yeah, the other two medications uh, being the copper at 2.5 and the general cure in the water column. So that's kind of gonna go on a fish by fish basis. If I see them with stringy poop, I can totally mix up a batch of food with a general cure and I can certainly feed it to them. Now, if you are gonna be feeding general cure to the fish, it's a good idea to buy a product by Seachem called Focus. What this does, it allows the food and all of that medication to bind up to the food so when the fish eats it, it actually absorbs it and it's doing what it's supposed to be. An interesting I read is if you're dosing General Cure with Focus in a medication, you can actually do it in a reef tank with corals, which was very interesting. Uh, you cannot do General Cure in the water column itself but you can do general cure if you're medicating it in food with focus. That was very interesting. I think I even read Humblefish uh, state that. He said he probably wouldn't recommend it, but he has seen people do that. And I even did my own research and found that, yeah, indeed there was people that would dose general cure with focus, bind it up with the food, and then feed it into the reef tank. If for any reason you notice any fish inside the reef tank have stringy poop or anything of that sort. But as far as that's concerned, guys, those are gonna be my two main medications. It's gonna be, again, copper power, as well as general cure. And if we need to mix a general cure with focus, to feed the fish if it has stringy poop then we will do that so as you guys see it's not a very difficult process and like i said if you're really in a rush you can totally break down the 30 days to at the very least 14 days i will tell you this 14 days is way better than not doing anything so i much would rather see you guys doing at the very least 14 days if you can't wait the full 30 and then you can go on with your way. So I'm very excited to get this going. I hope and plan to add fish tomorrow. Maybe you'll see them in the next update. I'm gonna go tomorrow to the LFS and possibly buy some fish. Why? Because the tank is already cycled, so I'm having to manually add ammonia every day to obviously guarantee that the cycle keeps going. So guys, I really hope you guys found this video useful. Again, this was just my way of sharing what I personally am gonna be doing. That's not to say that there's no other ways. There's multiple ways of doing the quarantine process. I just wanted to share the method I'm gonna be doing because I personally found that it's a very easy regimen to follow. And remember, if it's easy, you're probably gonna have a better chance of doing it over and over again. So guys, that's gonna be it for this week's video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to leave them down below. If you guys are wanting to buy the medication that I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna have a link in the description for the Copper Power, Seachem Focus, as well as the API General Cure uh, for you guys to purchase those down below. Again, I thank each and every one of you very much for watching. As always, happy reefing.